This part will give you an overview of all components necessary to build your own quadcopter. In part 1, we already discussed the major components that are necessary for a quadcopter and divided them into the radio control system, the flight control system, the powertrain and the quadcopter frame that holds all components together. Now we will go into the details some more. This quadcopter consists of 38 unique components and in order to be able to test everything, you will need 7 additional components. Let's start with the 9 components necessary for the frame. Remember that all components are available commercially online on Amazon, AliExpress or Banggood, except for the lower and the upper quadcopter frame. Both frames are tailor-made for this project and are actually just printed circuit boards. The printed circuit board material is a perfect match for small quadcopter drones. It is light and sufficiently flexible, meaning that it will bend but not break when you crash your drone. The upper frame holds the majority of the electronic components, while the lower frame holds the powertrain components. In part 10, we already explored the full electronic schematic for the quadcopter. This schematic is converted in the printed circuit board of the frame. The white, red and blue lines are the power distribution traces, which distribute the energy from the battery to the four electronic speed controllers. The smaller traces link the electronic components to each other, enabling the transfer of data. This is done with Easy EDA, a free online electronic design automation software that enables you to manufacture your design as well. The three-dimensional viewer allows you to see how your design would look like. Something similar can be done with the lower quadcopter frame. The number of traces on this frame is significantly less because you only need to link the electronic speed controller wires with the motor wires. Once again, the three-dimensional representation gives you an idea of how your PCB will look like in real life. The PCB that I designed for this project is able to accommodate motors with a 3 to 4 inch propeller, giving you some freedom to experiment with different motors and propellers. Both the electronic schematics and the actual frame designs are open source as well and can be accessed on the open source hardware lab through the link on the screen. You can select each time between the upper and the lower quadcopter frame for both the schematic and the design. Click on Open in Editor to start the Easy EDA browser software tool. After some loading times, the frame will appear and you can either adapt anything you want or order the PCB itself. To order, go to File and click on Generate PCB Fabrication File. If you didn't change anything, you can click on Generate Gerber. Click once again on Order and wait some minutes until the Gerber files are finished loading. The PCB will be ordered at GLCPCB, a company which has very competitive pricing for prototype PCBs. Five lower quadcopter frames will only cost you $14. Evidently, you will have to take into account the shipping cost as well, which depends on where you live. Now let's continue with the electronics necessary for the flight controller. All parts are off-the-shelf components that are available in various online shops. The most important component here is of course the TNC 4.0 microcontroller and the MPU 6050 orientation sensor. You will include a barometer and some screws and nuts to fasten both sensors. A green and red LED is necessary as well together with a couple of resistors. A number of additional electronic components are also important. The rarest component in this list is the Infineon BTS power switch, which you will have to buy in a dedicated electronic online shop, such as Mauser. Two different power switches from Infineon can be used, the BTS 580 or the BTS 555. If you cannot find this component, you can simply bypass it as explained in the final minutes of part 9. The powertrain consists of the motors, electronic speed controllers and propellers. You will need to use motors that can generate more than 150 grams of thrust each, 
and electronic speed controllers with a load limit that matches the maximal current drawn by the motors. As already explained, propellers with a diameter of up to 4 inch can fit on the quadcopter frame. If you choose to use GEPRC motors, the fastening screws are included in the package. In the table displayed on the screen, the options for two GEPRC motors, two electronic speed controllers and four different propellers are highlighted. When you choose a too large propeller for a motor or ESC, the current drawn by the motor will be too high and both the motor and ESC will overheat. This is evident for the 1105 motor. A 4-inch blade will cause a motor to draw a current of 9 amps and more, whereas the ESC is only designed for 6 amps. However, the larger 1206 motor paired with a 12 amp electronic speed controller is able to withstand the necessary currents that you will generate with a larger propeller. In conclusion, you will need to pair the 1105 motor and 6 amp ESC with a 2 blade 3 inch propeller, while the larger 1206 motor and 12 amp ESC can be paired with a 4 inch propeller. The final parts are the battery and the battery charger together with a radio transmitter and receiver. You can choose another 2 cell battery than the one displayed here if you want, but make sure that you check the dimensions. The battery bay on the lower quadcopter frame can only hold batteries with a dimension of 2.5 by 3.4 by 8 cm. And that's it. With these off-the-shelf components, you can build, adapt and even design your own personal quadcopter. The GitHub page, where I was referring to earlier, is now up and running as well. You will find the links to all videos and the code we discussed on GitHub. Just click on the part you want to see and you will enter the repository where you can open the link to the YouTube videos by clicking on the image and copy the full Arduino code by clicking on Arduino code. In the next video, we will have a look into a different type of flight controller, where you will stabilize the quadcopter based on its angles instead of its rotation rates. If you like this video series and want to learn more on quadcopter design and control, please subscribe and see you next time.